Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. Best of all, it's 100% free and ridiculously easy to use. Now, Anchor can match you with great sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast. That means you can get paid to podcast right away. In fact, that's what I'm doing right now by reading this very ad. We've been through multiple hosting services, and Anchor has been the easiest and most effective to use. And I'm honestly glad that we switched over. If you've always wanted to start a podcast and make money doing it, go to anchor.fm slash start to join me and the diverse community of podcasters already using Anchor. That's anchor.fm slash start. Can't wait to hear your podcast. Hello and welcome to Chumps and Champs, the show that examines the highs and lows of notable media franchises. I'm your host, Britton Roselle, and I'm joined today with my good friends and fellow podcast pioneers, Logan Lilly and Andrew Pohl. How are you guys? Ooh, pioneers. Fancy. So, great. So it sounds like you're doing well. I'm doing fantastic, Britton. How are you? Oh, so good. So excited to be back in the podcast hot seat, as it mm, were. That, and, that uh, new podcast smell. Really yeah. <laughs> wish this seat was a little less warm. It's getting uncomfortable in here. Well, we're coming off the mild success of It Won't Turn Off, and we're back with a new podcast format and a new direction for 2020 and beyond. So if you listen to the old show, thank you very much. If you're listening to this show, thank you also for doing that. We love you. Yeah, we love you. Thank, thank you, you for being a friend. Yeah, thank you for oh, being a friend. look at that, Andrew. He snuck it in. So this show is now one whole degree hotter as I have my master's and I'm ready to discuss the highs and lows, mm-hmm. the chumps mm-hmm. and champs of media franchises from the past 40 years. We're prepared, unlike the advice you've received from your coworker, to not skip the bad episodes or seasons as we dive into the heart of each series we select. For this introductory episode, we'll be discussing two episodes of The Golden Girls, Empty Nests, and The Case of the Libertine Bell. These are the lowest and highest rated episodes of the show as determined by IMDb. So going into this, let's talk about the background a little bit. Um, Andrew and Logan, what are your experiences with the media franchise, the pillar? Um, Golden Girls raised me from a young age. It picked me up with its beautiful wrinkled hands (laughs) and nestled me through my youth. Not, that was an exaggeration, (laughs) but it's, (laughs) I think it just existed and (laughs) I absorbed it with my body. Yeah, no, I honestly (laughs) think that's... That's kind of about where it is for me, too, because like the Golden Girls, each of them are icons, legends, heroes in their own right. But like like we remade the intro for It Won't Turn Off when we started it. And I mean, Dorothy, Sophia, Rose and Blanche are like the four heavenly queens of sitcom television. And because of that, (laughs) like looking to compare the ratings of the highest and lowest rated episodes is an experiment I'm really interested in. Because like I'm a big fan of the Golden Girls, but I don't think I've seen every episode of the Golden Girls. Like, I feel like you don't have to to really understand the message and the characters that are there. Well, my experiences are uh, including these two episodes we have uh, witnessed for this uh, podcast, I have watched two episodes. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it, it's, it's very interesting. It almost feels like they created some sort of shade, like like they invented it Yeah. in sitcoms. Oh, no, shade, like, as we know it, is definitely derived from two sources, and, like, that is obviously the Black and Latino community in Harlem in the 80s and a little bit before that as well. <laughs> And then also the Golden <laughs> Girls. Like, those are the two the two sources of shade energy in its purest form, I think. But yeah, I just, I love the Golden Girls. And I mean, like, did you have any knowledge about it before we went into this, Andrew? Or did you kind of just go in? I only knew Betty White was in it. Okay, good. That's the a good Arthur start. Arthur is my spirit animal. <laughs> she is, she's who I strive to be, really, Honestly, at the end of the day. yeah. I do think I'm definitely closest to a Dorothy. I definitely am the B. Arthur, I feel like. Ooh, maybe Golden Girls it, was the original, like, you know, it's like, who, which Sex in the City character were you? Maybe we should we should drop that. It's which Golden Girl are you? And I think, you just know. Yeah, I mean, I think that's pretty much the best way to tell someone's character 
is knowing what Golden Girls they are most like. So, okay, help me out with the names, though. So the Glasses Girl is one of the girls' moms. Yes, Sophia. Sophia. The one that just stares at people when they say something stupid. Dorothy. Dorothy. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> the Arthur. Yeah. And then there's the foreign one. Yeah, there's Oh, uh, Blanche is from Rose. the South. And then Blanche okay. is from I'm the so- South. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, from the South. <laughs> uh, you know, another country. <laughs> the foreign land place. of Georgia. Yeah. Um, so okay. without further ado, uh, let's get into these episodes. I kind of want to start with the chump because the podcast is called Chumps and Champs and it just that's the one that comes first. Um, it just feels right to do it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the lowest rated episode of the Golden Girls is Empty Nests, which is episode 26 of season two. Um, Got a stinker this, real quick. Yeah, it's rated like a 3.1 on IMDb, which is by far the lowest, like the lowest of the low. Most of the episodes are around like 7, 7.5. Um, with a few in the nine in the nine point two nine point three range, and that's going to be our champ. So in this episode, the girl's neighbor Renee, played by Rita Moreno, is having empty nest syndrome, while her doctor husband George, played by Paul Dooley, works too much, and her kids are gone for college. Their multiple personality relative is played for laughs, which is everything from uncomfortable to absolutely not medically correct, and a lot of the episode therein is not found within the girls' living room, but instead Renee's kitchen. The episode was evidently the plot for a spin-off show that I fully had not heard of until the day I watched it, but it has like seven seasons and none of the characters Seriously? are the same. Yeah, Empty Nest has like seven seasons and it ran from like the mid 80s to Oh, and that's what it was called. Yeah. Was Rita oh. Moreno in that too? No. No. No, no it's so just it a different just, Yeah. A different it's a family different entirely. Renee and George. Yeah. Oh, so it's just like we're going to use Golden Girls to our advantage. Yeah, we're going to use Golden Girls as a springboard for this idea that we're going to pitch to ABC. Right. And it worked. Right unrelated to the golden girls in and of itself entirely but it, just on the subject of spinoffs have you ever watched ncis new orleans oh my that God. <laughs> that show is wild it's i watched 30 seconds of it waiting for Shit's creek to start <laughs> and i'm like what is this show <laughs> totally like very different shows i feel yeah it's like what does this have to do with mark Harmon? is he here this is scott bacula why is scott bacula here why is there a jazzy uh a New Orleans vibe. I mean, that makes sense with it being New Orleans, but like, yeah, I think that would make sense. It was just like, like it was so much more crawdaddy, alligator, <laughs> crawdaddy, <laughs> feel than you'd expect of a crime drama. Ladies yeah. come and stay tuned for when we do NCIS, NCIS New, Orleans. New Orleans. Please, go. are they all chumps? New Orleans. <laughs> so. <laughs> Let's get into our thoughts on this episode. Some of the main things that I've pointed out are the fact that Dorothy's looks are on point as always. Like, she is the learned. She is the wise. She's the reasonable one. And, like, the jokes are still present despite, like, this being the lowest quote-unquote rated episode. I Mm. think, I mean, obviously, I think we know why. Because it is an emptiness experience rather than the Golden Girls experience. And, I mean, it has charm and it has wit, but it's not, like, the charm and wit that you would regularly encounter on the show. And I could definitely imagine that being off-putting for people, especially, like, at the time when this aired. I want to go out on a limb and say that this episode is completely fine, but it's definitely not great. Right. When you look at it, it's not it's not a bad episode. It's just not a Golden Girls episode. Right. They're there. It's just, they're sprinkled in. They popped in. <laughs> they're they're don't forget, Britain, a very important part of the plot, their dishwasher was broken. Mr. Fix It. Which that was just not good at any time ever. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I yeah, Andrew, I mean it. you are the you are the degreed psychologist. So well, all I was thinking about the entire episode, post this character's like presence in the show, was uh, Oliver, and yeah. Oliver's delivery of lines was some of the most confusing and ethereal things I've ever experienced. <laughs> so I think I like it, that episode stayed with me longer. That makes sense. It, <laughs> the pace of the episode is also really quick. Oh, yeah. like. I think actually both of these episodes go by very quickly. Yeah. Especially in the beginning, there was one scene. It was like when Renee first came in and they're cutting back and forth between everybody. I'm like, this is like ridiculous. Like whoever is doing the editing of these cuts, my, like my neck hurts. 
the first half of the episode is just Sophia just like having one liners and responding yeah. to things. Like she is <laughs> the golden girl for the first fifteen it, it minutes. It was of a the solid show. Sophia episode. listening. In this episode, Blanche has one of her more dramatic and overt <laughs> sexual outbursts, and for that, I'm very proud of her. Um, oh yeah, that was great. <laughs> it's like a whole. I two was minute. laughing out loud. Good for you. Yeah. I think, honestly, this episode, not just this this episode, this show in general, like, makes it okay to laugh out loud at the television again. And, like, yes. revisiting it, I think, is very nice. It's really refreshing because, I mean, aside from it being, quote, unquote, a different time, like, these jokes still land today. And, like, even though there are some references that maybe not everyone will get, um, I think it's still it's a very solid experience and like this show was built to last i think that's why it has had such an impact and that's why there are paintings of the four golden girls at the big gay ice cream shop in new york that i've definitely posed under is it like um did it was it not popular when it came out it was to an extent but i don't think it It was got memeified yeah i think the the advent of the internet and people like remembering those like saturday nights watching this with like their grandparents or their parents like really brought this back to a point where it does matter to our generation even though you know it may not be a i don't know like an equivalent sitcom that's out today like a schitt's creek i think honestly those are they're probably the closest in in comedic timing and in tone yeah more similar than i guess i would have thought yeah so anything else um on this episode before we move on um, to our champ i thought it was opposite i thought this was the uh the champ episode oh no and the other one was chump oh damn oh, andrew yeah like is that your yeah. is that your personal yeah. take on them like did you enjoy this one more that's your fear i enjoyed them equally okay and i think that's my virgin blood <laughs> when it comes to golden girls like i just <laughs> like them both I'm going to start watching the show. Dorothy demands virgin blood. <laughs> Dorothy <laughs> demands it. <laughs> All right. Let's let's hustle on over to the champ of the Golden Girls, The Case of the Libertine Bell, which is episode Ooh. two of the last season, season seven. Which I was surprised when we looked up the episodes and I'm like, oh, this was the seventh season. Like the final season is where their best episode is or highest rated at least yeah so the two highest episodes were this episode and then the finale of season seven which is the last episode of golden girls in general um the main reason i didn't pick that one over the libertine bell is the fact that it's the finale so i mean like of course it's going to have the moments and everything but i feel like just watching that standalone may not have the same effect so this one definitely would read more, you know, as a right. average representation of, of the highs of the Golden Girls. Um, so this one, actually, I'm very interested that we got to talk about it because there's a uh, YouTuber. Her name is Pushing Up Roses on YouTube, and she examines a lot of like old television. And like, and I think that's kind of also part of where the idea for this show this new format for Chumps and Champs came from in the sense that this was one of the episodes that was covered um, alongside the Murder, She Wrote Ski Lodge episode, which I vividly remembered from when I was younger watching that with my grandma. So I definitely... Iconic. Yeah. So definitely check out her channel if you like this conversation or if you maybe want to hear someone go like very in-depth on that kind of content. Um, But basically, for this episode, Blanche gets the girls to attend a murder mystery night with the museum staff so that she can compete for a position as executive assistant for Kenny, who is actor I do not remember the name of. (laughs) Dorothy is a fan of murder mysteries, and she ends up unraveling the whole event until a dramatic turn and a quote-unquote real murder happens, and Kenny turns up dead, with Blanche looking like the prime suspect. So he's not actually dead, but the girls are able to work together to solve the mystery, revealing that the second half of the event was just another plot by the director himself, a fan of murder mysteries to extend the festivities. Um, So this episode was really fun. It was. Mm -hmm. It is also wall to wall zingers in that episode. Oh, yeah. Everybody's ragging on everybody. And it's great. It's fantastic. My biggest question is, what was the pink salad dressing that takes Sophia out for the first five minutes of that episode? Like, the mystery continues to this day, and I would really love to know what it was. 
We need a novelization of this. <laughs> the pig explain. salad dressing incident. Yeah, a comic, a DC comic. Yeah, oh my god, a prequel comic to tie in into the Doomsday Clock. Um, Rose is amazing <laughs> here, and I think she's doing her best to be a natural Nancy Drew, uh, vis-a-vis St. Olaf's, of course. So she means, Rose means so well all the time. And mm-hmm. yes. she's Wholesome. doing she's doing her best, and like, <laughs> bless her heart, but... It just the the amount of times that she gets ragged on this episode for for being the way that she is, I think is is really fun. In addition to that, this whole episode gave me flashbacks to when my one class in middle school will put together a murder mystery fundraiser oh my God. to benefit That's the homeless. Awesome. And like I literally only vaguely remember the actual performance because I had to like set up food and stuff and I wasn't allowed to be one of the actors for it because I just got to the school for some reason, which feels weird, but whatever. And it was dramatic and fun and it reminded me of the dramatism that really surrounds the crux of this episode with Dorothy being able to just like reconstruct this whole murder in front of everyone in the middle of a dinner party. It was just great. It was really fun. And I love seeing Dorothy just, like, exist. Like, B. Arthur is such an amazing actress. Her her outfit in the first night when she, like, the first murder she solves, amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The sleeves rolled up with the, like, jackety thing. Oh, yeah. I think a a standout quote from her this episode was, this tramp is incapable of committing murder while pointing to Blanche. (laughs) Yes, I laughed out loud at that part. They had some (laughs) solid disses on Blanche in this episode, too. My favorite was when she said flirting was part of her heritage, and then (laughs) Dorothy said that means her mom was a slut, too. I was like, damn, roasted. Like, how'd they get away with that? What What year was this? Um, this was the last season, so I think it was 1991 or 1992. There was a lot of stuff like that that the show really kind of made okay. I mean, not that like you should just be calling people sluts, but like the the context of the joke and like, the, if, the way that it was delivered. There's words you can say with your friends, right? Well, I think like, that's what that, it that is. Are different. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Like they were, they are such good friends, and they are so close that like. It can be said in a way that's joking, but not necessarily derogatory. I think that's one thing that made this episode in particular so good for me is it was a really good episode for each person's personality. For sure. You got Blanche being typical, promiscuous Blanche. You have Rose being naive (laughs) slash dumb. Um, Dorothy, you know, I guess I never really thought about it when I watched it before, but she is the main character. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I guess when I watched the Golden Girls before, you go in and you think, oh, Betty White. So it's like the Betty White show. But really, it's all about Dorothy. Yeah. And, you know, you have Sophia just giving some of the best one liners in this episode. Sophia is amazing. And her stealing the cutlery was entirely too real. <laughs> like, yes. not to expose <laughs> Helen, my grandmother, but there is at least one Outback Steakhouse that had to order new silverware and hurricane glasses because of her. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I, I could reveal a lot of people who do that, <laughs> like call out post. I have jokingly said multiple times that I want the silverware from um, Riverside. And, oh and yeah, Cambridge Riverside's amazing because it's brass and it's amazing. It's yeah. If it goes missing, you guys have to look through my drawers because then I have all of them. If you're in the yeah. the Cambridge, Meadville, Edinburgh, Erie area, even if you're not, go to Riverside <laughs> Inn. Really, really great place. It's fun. I'm <laughs> not not to not to brag, but we've been cleaning up in trivia on Wednesday nights. So. Okay. Oh heck yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, we three peated this week. Damn. Sick. Damn, damn, damn. You go, Logan. My humble brag in the midst of this. It's the last time I'll bring up trip. <laughs> um. So, what about you guys? Did you have any any other notes? Any other takeaways from this episode? Have you guys seen the movie? It's not a not a recent version. I because I know in a lot of movies have this title. Uh, April Fool's Day? Is it the horror movie? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's the yeah, horror yeah. movie. Oh, and it's like really bad? It's not bad. Well, it's not bad, Is but it it's just like the whole... Andrew? In, in it's that the, case, yeah, yes. it's the one we watched. There's yeah. a murderer, but the whole thing was actually just an elaborate ruse. Yeah, yes. it's the only movie I've seen that did that, that made it actually stay a ruse. And that's the first movie I thought of when I saw this episode. Mm-hmm. Because it's paced exactly the same if the old women were teenagers and weren't funny or good actors or screwing each other well blanche <laughs> yeah. but 
I just very specifically, now that you're bringing up the movie April Fool's in the middle of our Golden Girls analysis. It's fair. There is one scene in that movie, for anybody that has seen it, and I don't remember where it is, but there's one part where there's two characters that are sleeping together, and I paused it, and my roommate Mike and I, we looked at it, I'm like, there is no way there is penetration in this scene. <laughs> it's like physically impossible. <laughs> Like how they're standing, but it's like that's. I was like, is it like the room level of bad? Yeah, like that's like not you're, where you're having goes, sex with your out. belly button. <laughs> it was something. I mean, I just remember very specifically like his leg was in a really weird place. I'm like, this uh, is not. Yeah, you gotta work. Physically you gotta, possible. You gotta watch that. Yeah, you can cramp up real easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I guess the big question for you guys is why do you think these episodes were rated the way that they are? I mean, I touched upon it a little bit, but. I think I would definitely like to hear your uh, perspectives on that. I think it's possible that um, Golden Girls started coming into its own later in this series. And it, it could have been that... Is the most episodes season two high rated? Yeah, basically that episode, Empty Nest, is the only one that is rated below like a six. Mm. In yeah. the whole series. I would say, as we said, I think Empty Nest is low because it's not a Golden Girls episode. Yeah. It's an Empty Nest uh, pilot with, featuring the Golden Girls. and Which, I mean, hey, if you're trying to launch a brand. Yeah, I mean, I believe everything was launched with the Golden Girls. Uh, that's how the <laughs> Avengers actually got started. That's the origin of the MCU, Yeah, um, is the Golden Girls. They created the Tesseract, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. They're one of the Infinity Gems. All four of them. Yeah. But the case of the Libertine Bell, I said, I think it's because by that point, you know the characters. You're like so familiar with how an episode's going to go. And it's mm-hmm. very classic Golden Girls. Like, it's, it's, if I was going to show somebody maybe an episode that'd be like, this is what most of the show's like, minus the murder mystery. Um, <laughs> Because really, it's just a look at the, these are the characters in this ridiculous situation. It's a very good character study, I feel, yeah. for each of them. I think the show's just, like, so good that you don't really need... Like, the, the, the episode isn't bad. The other ones are just better. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, that's that's a good way to put it. I mean, I was definitely hoping that our first episode of this would be, like, this is the worst thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Whereas oh, yeah, I want blood. But at the same time, I mean, I think very, I mean, very true to it won't turn off. There's definitely gray areas in discussion oh, and, <laughs> and things that are just like, it's fine, but, and while I don't think that makes for the most compelling argument, I think it definitely helps just prove, if nothing else, that Golden Girls is one of those television shows that like really can do no wrong. Like, even right. when the episode isn't about them, they are stealing the show. And they are making it a watchable and fun experience. Because that's the funny thing, is in that episode, the best parts of the episode are when they are on screen. So it's right. not like it's... The reason it's not good is because they weren't there. <laughs> right. And, like, whose fault is that? Because it's certainly not their fault. Also, that's the funny thing in, uh, in Empty Nest itself, too, is they're like... Their daughter left, but then she came back. She comes but back. Then she very left quickly. again. <laughs> it was just kind of really like she quit college and then changed her mind in a night, and it was fine. Yeah, that I admissions mean... office is pissed. <laughs> it was a different time. <laughs> well, I, you could I just go like... to you could go back and forth to college willy nilly back then. Yeah, back then it was just it was really weird. It's like I'm gonna the 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 father just disappears like. Yeah. For, from what I remember, like, he just kind of goes. He doesn't say where he's going. And then suddenly Rita Moreno shows up also at New York in the same apartment in the, building. And in the able fanciest to track him hotel down. I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. Like, would eventually become the set of Friends, like, five years yeah. later. Huh. Are we going to do a Friends episode? Uh, I was just thinking mm-hmm. that, and I kind of want to stay away from that as much as yeah possible. for a while the unless worst you episode guys of friends it. is going to be bad oh yeah yeah if we want blood <laughs> there will be if we <laughs> <do that. laughs> um, so i guess we're to the point britain yeah golden girls a champ or a chump i mean it's it's a champ like there is 
no evidence that suggests that anything regarding the Golden Girls could possibly actually be a terrible experience. Like, no matter what episode you're going to watch, you're going to have the characters interacting in a satisfying way. Even if the situation that they're put into isn't the best. Like, mm-hmm. there's the one episode where they get thrown in jail. It's not amazing, what? but, like, it's okay. <laughs> it's fun, and there are good moments to it. Um, like the Seinfeld people. Yeah, they're yeah. in there with Jerry, and, yeah, they're they're right there with him. Yeah, Aww. so it's just, you know, it's interesting that it had this resurgence, I think. The, the, fact, the very fact that we're talking about it in Year of Our Lord 2020 is just kind of, like, kind of astounding to me you know the fact that this thing was relevant culturally it was a very important television show you know it normalized sexuality for older people who have literally not ever been shown in a positive light in any show ever and then this happens it kind of reawakens the creative juices for sitcoms in general for like the the next seven to ten years stereotype yeah Right. And then it just kind of went its own way. And then for whatever reason, Betty White became the most talked about woman in television because of some reason, I guess. And here we are. are so prolific. Prolific. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, especially when they get syndicated. Uh, Golden Girls is so important. Happy endings that got canceled entirely too soon. Yeah. Yeah. I will never not be angry about that. I think that's a wild thing to think about, too, is this show started in the 80s, ended in the 90s, and the whole show was just like Betty White and her friends, which, once again, B. Arthur is the queen of this show. Ostensibly, she's the main character, yeah. But just just think of it like this, of like Betty White and her friends are old. Isn't that funny? And it's like, that was 30 years ago, and Betty White is still alive. (laughs) Yeah, and she's still making people laugh and still making television programs and still doing yeah, true. what she needs to do. There's actually a very interesting slash informative slash fun Betty White documentary that just got added to Netflix a few weeks ago. Ooh. Um, yeah, it's, it's fun. I mean, it's interesting. It has interviews with like a bunch of people that she's worked with goes over her whole career in television, which started back when it was still black and white, you know, like Betty White has been around. She has been a household name every generation Betty and White is a, actually uh, literally older than sliced bread. And that's yeah, not a but, joke. It's no, like she, she was is. born. And then like a couple of years later, they popularized pre-sliced bread. Yeah. Think wow. about that. <laughs> no. um, Who's the real chum? <laughs> you are for not knowing that. Yeah, um, no, yeah. I, I, I'm the chum. I need to start watching Golden Girls. Yeah, Andrew, what so, do you, since you went into this kind of blind, you know, what is your overall takeaway? Uh, that I should watch Golden Girls. That's valid. <laughs> so, a, so a champ then. Oh yeah, it's a champ. I'm the chump. <laughs> Somebody's <laughs> always the chump. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. I I'm going champ too. I think I think Golden Girls is kind of the perfect background show, if that makes sense. Like, there's yeah. several shows that Amelia and I watch that it's like I'm not drawing, putting my full attention into, but it's it's so funny like if you listen to what they say like you can be on your phone or you can be playing a game or something while it's on and you're like that was hilarious you can be playing and Raid i think shadow legends on your mobile device true oh hush you <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's funny i mean the sh- it's hard to watch the show and not think it's funny yeah like whether you're like into the you know whole theme of the show or not it, it's a funny show, and the writing in it is fantastic. I think. Well, we've we've made our deliberation. Golden Girls officially recognizes a champ right here today. Certified chump and champ champion. Yeah, it has never the first been one. Yeah, we are the first people to ever sing the show's praises. <laughs> yeah, we're yeah, little. Wow, we really well, busted open the door first, on the Golden Girls. Uh, it's our first champ. It is the first champ. It will always be the hall of champions that we're going to create on this show. Betty White, yeah. do you hear us? You understand. <laughs> we are lending you our energy, Betty White, to continue your legacy. Betty, um, if you're listening, you're welcome on anytime. Please, Absolutely. please. 
It doesn't matter what we're talking about because I want to yeah. hear you like rag on the Power Rangers. Heck yeah. <laughs> she, that, that's the episode she's going to come to. She's like, oh yeah, yeah guys, the Power Rangers, Mighty one, that's what we're going to do. Yeah. And she'll, but she'll come in and be like, this show's fucking boss. And that's what she'll say. <laughs> yeah, officially endorsed by Betty White. We'll have to add that to all of our marketing materials. Yeah. Well, An, a nice JPEG of her face on the bottom corner. Yeah. <laughs> Certified <laughs> Betty White fresh. <laughs> Maybe well, that's it. Maybe we everything is held now to the Golden Girl standard. That's going to be hard. That's going to be a hard legacy to live out to. So we'll have to see on the next episode of Trumps at Champs. Bum, ba, da, bum. Bum, ba, da. Thank you all for... Alexa, what the fuck? <laughs> um... You can always send feedback. <laughs> Thank you. Not, not sponsored. We have a guest today, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Jeff Bezos, if Jeff you want to give us some himself. money for that, <laughs> please, please give us some money for that. We did feature your product. Um, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter. And Bite? Uh, yeah, sure. Add me on sure, Bite. We'll make Add a Bite. somebody. Thanks for listening. On the same feed, you'll be able to listen to all of our older episodes, but won't turn off. I didn't want to make a new feed and confuse everyone. So that's what this is going to be. Um, take a look if you want at our best of series that we did over the last year and a half um, or just stay tuned for more Chumps and Champs I want to hear your suggestions yeah please do like NCIS New Orleans yeah New Orleans I, if I forced us to watch that show I'm going to be so pissed I mean it's, it's on fault. the list now it maybe it's just all added. Scott Bakula. Maybe every show just has to have Scott Bakula on okay. it somewhere. We can do we can do a theme month where we were just deep, talking deep about space. Scott Bakula. Just all Scott Bakula. That's all fine. the time. Works for me. Okay. Bye guys. <laughs>